Hello everybody, this is the BG on a cold, cold, cold November morning to talk about some of the equipment needed to make sausage. In the coming weeks we're going to have different videos about different recipes of specific types of sausages, but this serves as a tour video to talk about the equipment itself. The next video we'll talk about how to make or how to clean a uh, sausage casing and then we'll move on to specific types of recipes. But for this one we're going to be going over the grinder and the stuffer. What I have here are actually separate pieces of equipment for doing the grinding and the stuffing, but that doesn't mean this is the only way to do it. These are more expensive professional level equipment. If you're just starting out, it is great to do things like the attachments that go along with KitchenAid Mixer to see if you like it, but they're all made up of the same components. They all have an auger that actually gets the meat from going from the throat out to the cutter head assembly. And then you have, you have the auger, you'll have the knife, and then you'll have the grinding plate. The knife rubbing against the grinding plate acts like a scissor and then it forces the meat out the little holes of the grinding plate. The grinding plate itself has different size holes depending upon the coarseness or fineness that you want the grind to come out at, but that's, that's the only components to it. When you look at the grinding plate, every time you use it, you wanna use the same side of the grinding plate to rub against the knife head. And so when you look at the grinding plate, one side will be smooth without any circular marks on it, and the other side is going to have the marks coming from the rubbing of the marks coming from the knife, and you always want to make sure that you're matching that same side over and over again with the knife. Also just wanted to have a quick point about the specific auger on this grinder. Uh, a lot of grinders will have a uniform helix on the auger and the issue is is that the meat doesn't want to get drawn into the cutter head assembly. I really like these LEM products because of that specifically. They have a thing called the Big Bite technology. I am not sponsored by LEM, I just really like using their equipment. And the, the first time I used it, I thought this was amazing compared to other types of ones that I've used because you didn't actually have to uh, jam the meat you know, down the, the throat to get it to get out the cutter head. It just, if you have meat cut properly and everything is, the path is clear, uh, it'll just suck it out. It'll just suck it through the throat and then you know out the cutter head. It's, it's amazing. The other thing that goes along with the grinder is actually different size plates and so in this one I'm holding a quarter inch whole plate and then I also have a one half inch grinding plate. What you're doing with those is just depends on the type of grind needed for the sausage. So for Polish sausage for our family we'd use the half inch plate and then most other sausages I like to use the one eighth inch plate. Different you know sausage makers, different butchers are going to be using different size plates. In general, when I'm looking at uh, store-bought stuff or you know, going to a butcher shop, most of the time they're going to be using a 3 16th inch plate. I think that's a bit coarse actually for most uh, just like grilling types of sausage. I like to use a 1 8 inch plate. It's harder on the grinder. You know, the smaller the hole size, the harder the grinder will have to work to actually get the meat cut through it. But for me, the product is better. The texture is always better uh, you know, when you actually make sausage like that. There's also uh, different people that will, you know, I see lots of different discussions about do I do it with a single grind or double grinding things. Everything I do is single ground, meaning that when I cut up, you know, the chunks of meat to actually grind, I am doing it in one step. There are lots of butchers that will actually do it, you know, uh, send it through a, a quarter inch grind plate or a three sixteenths inch grind plate and then back again as an eighth inch grind plate. For me, my opinion is I want to do everything in one step on this, and I actually will mix the seasoning later on. I think I get a better product uh, from not overworking the meat, over grinding the meat by just doing a single grind. The next piece of equipment is the stuffer itself, and in this one I like uh, having an all stainless type stuffer. It's easier to clean, uh, but they're always made up of the same thing. It's made up of a large cylinder that has the actual stuffing tube attached to the bottom of it. And then there's going to be a plunger with a piston on it that actually forces the meat down the cylinder and then out the, the bottom tube. Most of them will have a release valve at the top so that you know the air that gets built up or that's trapped inside of the 
main cylinder can actually go out. You don't want air you know, being forced into the sausage mixture uh, because then you'll have these air bubbles in your sausage and it's just not, well one, it doesn't look appealing and then two, you're losing weight you know, for each link of sausage. But on this one, you know, that's the main components of it. It's, it's simply just a large cylinder that you can put meat in, have it be pressed down, and then it gets forced out of a sausage tube. Some other notes to add is, would be that you need to have a way to clamp down the stuffer assembly to the table that you're working on. You don't want the things sliding all over the place when you're working. And so for this one, it's, it's easy for me to just clamp it down to the stainless table that I work on. The other thing to add to are the different size uh, stuffing tubes. This one comes with three different types of tubes. The one that I have on right now is meant for pork casing. When you're having different size or different um, size sausages in the store, like when you look at a breakfast link that's real small, or compared to something like a, a summer sausage link, the types of casing required come from different animals. So when you need a small type sausage, like a breakfast sausage, that is a lamb casing. What would make up our traditional style size sausage like we're making uh, for the coming videos would be a pork casing. And then if you need something larger, like a salami or summer sausage or things like that, that's actually a beef casing. So the diameter changes based on the animal that you're using, and that's how you get the, the different sizes. Thanks for touring with us today. In our next episode, we'll take you through the process of preparing and cleaning natural sausage casing. After that, we'll take you through the process start to finish on how to make Polish sausage. Be sure to subscribe to our channel to get notifications for when these episodes go live. See you next time on our final freezer. Do it again? Yeah.